Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. We often model a lot of uh, ladies' ring, but not too many of the gentlemen rings. So today, I would like to dedicate this video to making this diamond gentleman ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. For this gentleman ring, it's an interesting design to go from these edges to be really sharp pointed and coming into the side to be flat and coming into the bottom to be flat. So that's starting with this B setting first. You can download this stone for practice alone. The link is in the description below. And what we wanted to do is to size this uh, stone first. The way to size it is you are going to use the command for scale 3D. And we are going to snapping into the vertex to the vertex. And then you can um, just move your mouse for whatever size that you want. Or you can actually type it the number. In my case, I want them to be 2 millimeter. Now, when you bring in this stone, it may not be in the right place. So we want to use the command for align centers. And we want to align to the zero point on the construction plane. So just type in zero. Then it will come in over here. Okay, so now let's take a look. Ideally, you wanted the gap in between the stone is about 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter. And so I just want to have a reference here. I'm going to draw a straight line and just type it 0.1 millimeter. So I know the next stone, uh, this is will be the gap for the next stone. And that's using the command for a, a linear array. With this linear array, I'm going to use the number, maybe seven of them. And then I want to snapping into the vertex here and to the end point over there. So everybody will have the same distance. Let's pick up everybody and let's group it. So now it is a one unit and we want to use the align centers and pick up this one and just type it zero. So the center, um, the fourth one will be the center. Now let's take a look on the prong. For the prong, we are going to do is draw a straight line, something look like this. It doesn't have to be too long. In this case, I would like to have a prong that's eyeball it for whatever size that is suitable. Uh, let's give it a try. I want to have a radius for 0.4 and see how big is it and to see if you like it. Now, when you have a 0.4 over there, this one might be a little bit too big. All right, so maybe I want to have it just a little bit smaller. I want to have a 0.35 as my radius for piping this. That's using the pipe command and type it 0.35. So we'll have something like this. I want this one right in the middle in between those. And remember, we have that line over there. So I'm going to use the align tool and align. Uh, vertical centers and snapping into the midpoint there. So this is right in the middle. And I want to move in this uh, prong. So ideally, you don't want it to be prong to be like so tall like that because then you will have a gap in between the wall and the stone. So we want to have something like this. And you also want to make sure that the prong is not cutting too much. Ideally, 20% of the thickness will be fine. Then let's go ahead to um, making a mirror and mirror to the other side. So we'll get something like this. And again, I'm going to pick up those two and we are going to use the linear array and we want to array seven of them. And again, go from this point to this point. So then we'll have the prong over there. And use the mirror command. Type it zero there, so we will have a prong there. At the end of the prong, I actually just need um, any end of the stone setting. I just need to have one prong there. So I'm just going to again using the align tool this time, align horizontal center, and just type it zero, and we can move it out a little bit, something like this. Okay, uh, this one, just make sure it will be the same place. So it's easier just mirror again. So that's using the mirror command, type it zero, and we'll get something like this. 
All right, so now we got everything. So let's go ahead to make a frame. Uh, we want something a little bit wider than the stone. Doing something like this. Again, we want this aligned to the center. Just type it zero. All right. Ideally, we want this part to be triangle. So that's using the insert, the kink. And we want to insert right in the middle here. And we also write to uh, right in the middle here. All right. So now if we turn on the control point, we can pick up this point and this point and also this point and this point. Simply just one D scale and we can bring them in like this. All right. If you feel like this is too much cutting into the stone, we might need to scale it up like this. So I'm sorry, not cutting into the prong so we can scale it up something like this. All right, double make sure if this is what you want. I feel like maybe I make it too pointed. So simply just scale it back up a little bit like this. All right, double make sure this is a space that you like. Now, we need to have three row, but I also need to make sure in between the row, there will be a little bit metal left. So let's go ahead to offset this curve and doesn't need to be too big. I simply just wanted to have a 0.3 millimeter. And if the other row have 0.3, then I will have um, 0.6 millimeter in between. All right, so this is the frame that we have. And let's go ahead to making a copy. So I'm going to copy from this point to this point. And again, I want to copy all of them and from this point to this point. And you can make it as many rows as possible uh, you want. And by in this case, I would like to have a three row. Now I'm looking at the front view, realize I did not have them light up. So let's pick up all our prong and just move it up a little bit. You just need to be have it just a little bit taller than the table. All right, so now it is all set. We're going to move it a bit higher there. Let's take a look on the size of a gentleman ring. Uh, the more normal size, it's about 10. Size 10 is the most uh, popular size, average size. But for the demonstration, I'm just going to use 16 millimeter. Just type it zero here and the diameter for 16 millimeter. OK, and then so this is a little bit wider uh, than my ring and that's perfect as exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, and that's uh, starting making the profile for the bottom of the ring shank. I would like to snap it into the zero using the command arc. And we are going to make it a little bit wider here, close to two millimeter. And I want to move in those three points so it's tapered there. Okay, so now we have this line. Let's take a look on the perspective. All right. So we need to have a, something like this one need to be continuous going to the top. So I'm actually going to draw a line snapping into this end point and kind of calm it, it down something look like this. All right. And it's a bit ugly right there. I know, but we can fix it. Let's go ahead to trim uh, split this one split command. Uh, we want to we want to split uh, with the point right at the quadrant there. And then so we can delete half of them. All right, for those two, let's just go ahead to join them. And we want to rebuild this curve. I want to rebuild them to be the same A point and just hit enter. Right, so you can see it's get a little bit smoother and double check if see if this is what you want. Okay, so if this is what you want, we are going to creating the surface. Now we have this and it's going to be tapered to the bottom. So I want to see like what bottom uh, size to be that snapping into right here uh, with the line command line from the midpoint. Uh, the icon is leaving right there line from the midpoint and I want it to be roughly about maybe close to six millimeter or five millimeter there. On the top, I'm actually going to reuse a certain line. 
So I'm going to reproduce a line. Uh, make sure your endpoint is on, and I want to snap it into the endpoint, endpoint, bunch of endpoint right there. And then we can pick up this point. I'm going to make it into the red color. All right, if you just go ahead to sweep, we're going to sweep one rail. This is a rail, this is the cross section and the cross section. You're going to notice that this uh, zigzag shape is going to go all the way to the bottom. When it's very close to the bottom, then it will become flat. But my goal is to having something, it's about right in the, in the half of the shank and they become flat. So what I like to do is to, again, using the line uh, from midpoint, I'm going to snap in to somewhere close to the quadrant there or close to where you want them to be flat and to be something like this for whatever size that you want. So that is adding one more control to make sure that the red zigzag shape will come into the flat and will continue flat to the bottom of the ring. So let's give it a try. We want to use a sweep one rail. This is a rail. This is the cross section. This is another cross section and very last cross section. All right. So now we have this, but notice that it is not completely straight. All right, but that's okay. We can just simply doing a trim. We can just draw a straight line coming over here and snapping into this endpoint. And coming over here on my right view, I might just want to trim over something like this, right? And you can have this curve to mirror to the other side and something like this. For those two, then you can trim it off here and trim it off there. So you can have a really straight line over there. All we need to do now is having this surface that we just created and coming into the front view, we simply just want to mirror to the other side. So you will become like that. Don't forget to join those two surfaces, and we just need to close it. Now to close this is quite simple. We need, to, uh, we need to have some curve. So first of all, we'll need to have a curve go from this point to this point. And then we are going to use the command, since they are flat, that's using the surface from planar curve. And we're going to pick up this curve, the one we just draw, this one, and this one. And we're creating this surface. With this surface coming into the right view, we can simply just mirror to the other side one more time and to be like that and don't forget to join all of them all right so all you have now uh, uh left is on the top and you need to cap it so we just wanted to uh, use the cap and we close it right now um we have this uh inside of a ring shank here the curve is over there so coming into the solid you got the extruded planar curve straight and then you will get something like this. And don't forget to join the surface. Double make sure that see what is this say here. It's a closed solid poly surface. So you need to make sure they both are solid before you actually um, to do any of the bowling. So we want to do the bowling difference. This one will be out of this one. Okay, so now we have a, a basic ring done. We need to have the stone sitting lower. If you have any stone, uh, stick it out like this. It pretty much will uh, smash the prong or kind of hurting the stone on the table. So what we actually wanted to do is make sure that the table is flush with the surface. Now, if you don't cut any seat out of your stone, just bury inside. So I'm going to pick up this curve that we create earlier as an interior and we simply just go into uh, using the so uh, solid you have extruded planar curve and then you want to go a little bit deeper right and then with that we can use the boolean difference this one will be uh, cut it out for this color that we just created so now the stone will sitting in there if you take a look on the render view i mean it felt like they are uh, sitting directly in there. Sometimes it's nice to have a bevel edges that will make um, 
the reflection to your stone better. And we don't need to have something really big. Uh, let's give it a try. All right, so we want to chamfer the edges and we want to pick point two um, all over. You want to pick, make sure you pick all the curve at once and see how it look. It looks pretty nice. If you take a render view, now you have this bevel edges there or what people will call it as a bright cut. Right, so we want to do the same thing uh, coming over to the icon. We have the chamfer edges, and we are going to do the same number on here as well. And pick up this one, this one, and very last one you pick up the here, 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 and here. And don't forget to cut out a C for the stone. Um, Make sure that you have the um, the light to go from the bottom. Uh, make sure you have a hole behind the stone. And that will be our gentleman ring for today's demonstration. I have a lot of uh, tricks and tips on my membership program. You are more than welcome to join the membership. There's a lot of uh, video over there that I only share with the member. Thank you for your support and thank you for watching. See you next.